Hi everyone, I'm Dylan. And I'm Roman. And we are reviewing Top Gun Maverick. But also, Truman and Nick are reviewing Mission Impossible. Let's uh, enter the danger zone and check out the trailer for Top Gun Maverick. Here we go. In three, two, Whoa! one. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. What the hell kind of mission is this? Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. Just want to manage the expectations. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. You think up there you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Someone's not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. Smoke in the air, smoke in the air! You'll never forgive yourself. No turning back now. Come on! Yet. Okay, Top Gun Maverick. This is a movie that I actually had no hope for. I, I mean, I'd seen the first Top Gun movie, and it's a good movie. But when I heard, I heard they were doing a sequel, I was like, okay, like that, that could be good. That could be, that can go either way. This is a phenomenal movie. This yeah. is actually one of my favorite movies of this year so far, just because of it, it. Just feels like a movie. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? When yeah, I say no, that? no. It's a, it's a, it's a real movie, movie. Which I know yeah. feels like it's like why'd they bring but, these guys in here to review things? They're just gonna call yeah. it a movie. But in some ways, that can be a bad <laughs> thing. But here. I love how much movie this movie is. They, they really <laughs> lean into like all the tropes that you would yeah. expect would be in here. And I think the best thing Top Gun Maverick has going for it is this feels like an 80s action movie that was made today. Yeah, it's right. literally like Top Gun but made with better technology. All the flight scenes are like topped up like to uh, like 11. It's like awesome. And yeah, you're right. It literally is like an 80s movie. It feels like all you have all the archetype... Uh, uh, all the characters from like an 80s movie in like a present day movie and it's just it works I, th I, I love it I love the vibe of this movie yeah it works great and it, it's one of those it's one of those movies that you can just see everyone involved is loving their time spent there you know all these yeah. all these actors seem like they're having a ton of fun and Tom Cruise it's great to see him in something he's really passionate about I mean yeah I mean for sure I I had no clue that he was, he really wanted to do this. This was one of his passion projects for many years. He had been wanting to do a sequel, Tell Maverick's Story. Um, I think his performance in this movie is actually one of his best in a long time. 
I would agree. I mean, I, I would absolutely, I would absolutely say it's one of his best in a long time. Uh, maybe one of the best of his career. It's. I think the first movie that finally acknowledges that Tom Cruise is actually getting old and like aging, which yeah. is like, which is different. I don't think that's ever happened before. I'm, I mean, he's had a little bit of the Tom Brady syndrome where yeah. it was for a long time like, is this guy gonna age? But and but, I, uh, I think something this movie really does is reminds us the fact of how good of a movie star Tom Cruise really is. Like, yeah. he is a movie star. Right. Maybe I, not the best actor ever, but he's a movie star. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, one of, a, one of a few guys that you would probably lump into that category of, like, they're the prototypical movie stars. You know, yeah. he's, you think about him in the same breath as, you know, you're sort of like, uh, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnsons and, you know, Stallones. Like, that, that's kind of mm -hmm. where you put, kind of where I put Tom Cruise. And he's a guy that can really carry an action movie. And, you know, he sort of he becomes one of those guys that you don't even think about anymore. They're just like... How well Tom Cruise is in a new movie. So yeah. it's great to see him in something that you can just see how much he wants to be there, how much he's loving it. I mean, Top Gun was uh, the major movie for you know making bringing him up to that status. So yeah, it's really cool to see him revisiting this, taking sort of a new role in the franchise, but really going back to a lot of what made that character work the first time around. For sure. I mean, it, this movie is is really big. I like. It's a really simple story, honestly, when you when you look at it. It is very simple. It's about Tom Cruise. You got um, his old partner, Goose's uh, son, is in the, the Top Gun program. He's teaching the program. Kind of basic, but it really works. I really think that him and Miles Teller have a great relationship in this movie, too. It they really do. works. Very good chemistry as actors. You know, they, the, uh, <laughs> the young guns are great. Uh, the, young, the young guys are, are awesome. You, sometimes you worry about movies like this that are clearly targeting nostalgia that um you know that some of the new things they bring in are just going to be like hey, get rid of that we just want the old stuff mm -hmm. not this time around you know these the young actors these are people you want to see on screen you're yeah. not just like oh, give us more of the old give us more of the old um honestly no i think the new the new top gun group was the most fun i had with the movie honestly whenever yeah. they were on screen was the most fun yeah pretty good stuff and we talked about him i didn't know the actor's name i didn't know the actor's name before but whoever plays Hangman. <laughs> yeah, I think the two his... standouts are Rooster and Hangman. Rooster I know. and Miles Hangman. Teller, but yeah, do you, I forgot. Do you remember his name? I, I can't recall oh, his name, but I, I remember. Look it up. I remember how liked it, how much I liked his character. He starts off as this like kind of you know quintessential like '80s bully kind 80s of '80s bully, character. yeah. But he has a great arc in the movie. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I love how it, it wraps up. It's he just... just he just leans into that that you know that old that 80s like archetype almost yeah. that blonde hair blue eyes handsome bully guy he just does it so well you just the things he says are so arrogant and so hateable but like he's got this very compelling air to him mm -hmm. and man does he pull off the punchable face it's it's one of those one of <laughs> those sure. guys that you see on screen and you hate him but you just love to hate and it's a great performance you know, you're not going to see anything in here that's going to be like, oh, that's going to win an Oscar. You know, that's yeah. that's amazing acting. It's not that type of stuff, but it's the the type of acting that really carries. It's the movie good character well. work. I really good think a lot work. of the characters in this movie are just likable from the get go, and it's yeah. it's it really. Uh, I, I think the whole Top Gun crew. That said, I think maybe there's one character in this movie that was yeah. <laughs> like a little iffy. I just Jennifer Connelly is in this movie. And I get why they casted her. I get why she's in the movie. Good to see her again. Honestly, good, kind of good to see her. But then, it's like every time it went to her scenes, I was just like, all right, let's get back to Top Gun. Like, yeah, I, I agree. And this is, you know, we talked about we talked about this being an '80s movie that was made now. This is one thing that maybe wasn't improved on. Yeah, from 80s exactly. Movies, it you know? feels like the same thing from the first movie. It's and just, like tacked on love story. Yeah, in a lot of a lot of action movies, especially in the '80s and. We still get this a lot today. The, the sort of love interest, the sort of romance plot line is kind of unnecessary. And they didn't do a lot to fix it this time around. You know, I, you, you kind of get the sense that it doesn't serve the plot a lot. A lot of, I think the best thing having a love interest or a romance plot line can do for an action movie is give you a reason to care about the characters, to give you yeah. to care about the people who are in danger. And I don't really feel like that's the case here. I feel like the reason we care about Maverick reason we care about Tom Cruise in this movie is independent of, oh, he has a family. He has, you know, this other character we really like who cares about him. Not really the case. 
you know, I don't didn't really see the point of a lot of the Jennifer Connelly scenes. I thought they could have done more with her. You know, she's a great actor. Yeah. But um, but overall, doesn't take away too much from the things that are really cool about this. Yeah, honestly, it's, it was not n never enough for me to be like, okay, this is actually hurting the movie. I actually never thought it it really hurt the movie. It was just like. It, it takes you out of like the excitement of like having Miles Teller and Tom Cruise do their thing, yeah. and you move to Jennifer, and you're like, okay, yeah. Like, it's just it's just a change in pace, and it it definitely you can feel it. Yeah. Well, uh, that being said, we are gonna check out our first commercial break. We talked about a lot so far, but how can we not talk about the best thing this movie has to offer? In the action, the you know, we've got amazing flight sequences. Yeah. You're I mean, just, right off the bat, you're just brought into this world of just like, yeah, this is the first scene you see of a plane flying. You're just like, holy crap. Like, yeah, this is going to be this is about the flying, which is yeah. like, this is why I actually think this is better than the original Top Gun movie. Because the flight really? sequences, I, I genuinely think it is better because the flight sequences are just actually done to perfection. I actually think it's the, the, the best on film, like flight sequences in any movie. Yeah, that's probably true. I, I can't really think of an example of a movie that has more engaging, more you know, high octane uh, flight sequences like this. Yeah. It, it's exactly what you want to see them doing, bringing modern technology to an old franchise. Uh, I, well, not even a franchise. This is the first yeah. <laughs> first revisitation of Top really? Gun since the original. But um, but you know, you're getting a lot that's real planes real things that you're seeing on camera and, and you know real stunt work at times it's great i mean it just looks awesome you get a lot of uh camera and the cockpit shots and, yeah. and the action is easy to follow you know that's one thing you worry about when you get you get all this you know here's a guy talking and then a plane you kind of you know what's going on who's that who's in this plane who's in that plane they make it really yeah, no, easy to follow it's easy to track and even with someone you know you got someone in the back of the plane you got someone in the front you could follow like it, literally the way it goes from each character you really it, it's it's easy to understand it's easy to follow yeah and and that's not that's not a, a small feat to pull off no, that's especially when they're in the air flying around Cause going this crazy is a, <laughs> Oh, for sure. I mean, this is a very a traditional, um, you know, uh, thing for an action movie to revolve around. Yeah. Um, dog fights. I mean, it's the whole. A lot of the action that involves planes aren't dog fights. It's. I actually think those were my favorite sequences in the movie, though, when they're training for the like training, their, like the yeah. training montages were like my favorite part. I mean, come on, you know, we're, yeah. we're turning into an '80s franchise. Got, it's got to have got the great Maverick training just montages. Being a cocky, you know, just the cockiest oh, yeah. teacher possible. Yeah, it's awesome. It's 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 great, and uh, I this is what I'm saying. I really think it improved on the first, the original. Like the original, you have some flight sequences. They're they're really cool. They're really fun. Yeah. But I think in the way they're shot and all like the technicalities of it, it's done so much better in Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, I I would agree on that. <laughs> one thing we mentioned, um, one thing we mentioned before that I want to bring up is this is a movie that is going to do a lot of things you expect. It's going to lean into a lot of tropes. There's going to be a lot of times in this movie where you you know the line the character is about to say before they say it, and it's not a problem here. Yeah, it's like it's, exactly what you want to see. I think that has a lot to do with the action, actually, because yeah. the action sequences, you're just like, wow, this is so awesome. And it has so, it really, it, just because of Maverick and Rooster, it has so much to do with the story, too, which is just like you're, you're so mm. invested in the action sequences that not that everything else doesn't matter, but like you excuse some of the tropey stuff. Yeah, honestly, I think they make the tropey stuff more of an attraction, even because it's like yeah. a lot of these a lot of these tropes are things that we're all familiar with, but some of them are things that we actually haven't seen for a long time, and they're really genre callbacks to '80s action specifically. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of it too. But but from the start, this movie knows exactly what it is and takes itself just as seriously and just as non-seriously as it needs to. Yeah. So when these things come, when they hit these familiar beats, you know, like when a character's about to do something crazy, the guy that's with them goes, oh my God, well, you can't believe it. You know, yeah. like, I mean, you know, lines like that or like right when the, you know, right when they're in trouble, the third guy from off screen comes in to help out, you know, things like that. But it, it's part of the experience. You know, you want to see these things with a movie yeah. like that. You don't want it to be something completely experimental and subversive. You know, it, it's it's kind of comfort food in that way. And uh, this is like one of the best blockbuster movies I think that released 
in this the last, year. last last few years, honestly. Last few, yeah, yeah, it's probably for blockbuster action. Yeah, I would definitely, yeah. I definitely put it in the definitely put it in the top half. I think you like the movie a little bit more than I do. Maybe a little bit. I, I don't know. I watched I watched the first one and the second one back to back, literally within probably like eight hour span. Yeah, uh, that, that, that I don't know if that added to it. But probably I was just would. so riled up to watch Top Gun. It probably would. You know? One of the one of the one of the minor critiques I have of this movie is. You do have to know a little bit more about the original Top Gun yeah. than you than I would have expected. Like I hadn't I hadn't seen the first Top Gun since I was in like middle school. So there was a bunch of stuff I forgot and there was actually some moments where I kind of was like, wait a minute, what happened in the first movie? Not that big of a deal because there's not that much that you actually, you know, it's only yeah. one movie. I mean, it really just is that one big plot point about, you know, Goose. Like yeah, if you didn't and, see the yeah. first one, you're not as emotionally invested in Maverick. That could be true. I, I, one yeah. of my friends saw it without seeing the original, and he was like, I didn't see, need to see the original. I was like, it definitely would have helped a little bit to have yeah. seen the original. Yeah, that being said, if you have seen the original, it will make it all that much better. Again, I still really like this movie, but one one critique I did have is I thought the very beginning was really cool. I really liked the first act, and I really, really like the last act. It really finishes strong. I think you'd yeah. agree. The last part of this movie is easily the best. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the culmination of their whole yeah. training is just but fantastic. For me, some of the stuff in the middle, some of the, you know, how we get from from him learning that he's going to be teaching them to sort of the end of their training montage, there's some stuff in there, you know, some of the Jennifer Connelly's family scenes that really kind of slowed the movie down for, for me uh, around like the maybe one hour, 20 minute mark. Um, this movie's a little on the long side, but it doesn't feel super long. But there was some stuff yeah. that kind of slowed it down for me there. But it, it does to its. Credit. I'm gonna it like back up really half strong. agree with you there. I'm gonna, I, I agree the Connolly scenes, yes, do slow the movie down. But I also think the middle has some of the better sequences of the, you know the training. You yeah. Have the fun football sure. sequence, which is just a great <laughs> callback to the volleyball sequence. Oh, uh, the football scene is yeah, it's a it's a ton of fun. I wonder if someone hasn't seen a lot of like. 80s American action movies yeah. if they might watch this and be like what this is weird this is campy <laughs> but like if you have it's great it's such a like it's such uh -huh. a good return to form um, and I can only see it that way because because that's you know that's how I grew up I, I grew up this, this, this movie is good at doing callbacks it's not you know some of it is direct callbacks literally they yeah. recreate scenes which is like you know it's okay but then some of it is like more on the nose, you know. It's it's sort of a callback, just kind of their own spin on it. Oh uh, yeah, kind of their own spin. I think that's a good way to put it. So, uh, how overall? Because we always do a number. Would you rate this movie out of ten? I, I've only seen it once right now. Currently, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. I had a blast with this movie. A lot of fun, great theater experience. How about you? For me personally, I'm going to go. Just a notch lower than you and give it an eight, but this is one that if you like the first Top Gun especially, you can't miss. And if you just want to go see a good blockbuster in theaters, you can't miss this one. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, for sure. We'll be right back after this. Now we're going to kick it on over to our on the spot correspondents, Truman and Nick, who are reviewing Mission Impossible. Hi, my name is Nick. And I'm Truman. And today we're reviewing the original Mission Impossible from 1996. Let's check out the trailer. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. This is your mission should you choose to accept it. Should you or any member of your IM force be caught or killed, the Secretary will disavow all knowledge of your actions. Ethan Hunt will be your point man as usual. Good luck, Jim. Simple game. Is he serious? Always. It's much worse than you think. We're being ambushed. Abort, that's an order. They knew, they knew we were coming. I don't care how he did it. I want to know why he did it. You're worried about me. Why you survived? I'm sure we 
can find something I have that you need. These guys are trained to be ghosts. Let's not waste time chasing after him. Just make him come to us. Find something that's personally important to him and you squeeze. seen me very upset this tape will self-destruct in five seconds so i'm gonna let you start off with this so you don't just take the opposite opinion of whatever i say that was, that was not what i was going to do i loved this movie i'm kidding i didn't like this movie very much there was aspects of it that i enjoyed but I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the you know we're doing spoilers I've decided this came out this movie came out what 20, 20 years ago about a little less than twenty twenty six years ago yeah really Damn. yes all right so okay we're doing spoilers is what I'm saying it, you had plenty of time to watch it and you can just pause this and go watch it real quick and come back it's brutal but you know we'll have a good time anyway this movie was. It was it was just nonsense, kind of right. Like there, there, it had some cool action set pieces <laughs> in it. Like I loved the scene, just conceptually, I guess, where the iconic scene where he's being lowered on the rope and, and, wear, and he's wearing the glasses with all the and he's shiny and sweaty and yeah. he's shiny and catches the sweat. That's super yeah. cool. And then the knife falls down and sticks in the table, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What did you? I'm curious. What did you think about the beginning twist where they established like a team? And then everyone in the team died because I thought that was crazy. I, it was it was a weird twist, you know. Just I, I feel like it was structured where, weird where we had, a, uh, I don't know, we had enough time to meet the team to get established with them, kind of, and they 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 would establish these things where it seemed like it was a thread that was going to continue throughout the entire movie. Like there was something about Jack and what was her name, Hannah, uh, going on a date or like liking each other or something, but then they both die 10 minutes later. So there's no real point to that. I guess I guess you're meant to feel like, oh, you're meant to have felt like, oh, I, we lost these characters, you're meant to like feel Ethan Hunt's loss. But he doesn't feel any loss. Cause like, yes, he does. They, but in the movie, like 10 minutes of watch time later from when they die, he's like, <laughs> hey, let's find this guy. Let's find Job who's going to find the knockless. Like, why is he so happy smirking up a storm? It is, it is very weird. It, it, it's very weird character inconsistencies where he's, he's on the phone with Kittredge screaming at him uh, or, he's, or he's meeting with him and he's like, you dare think that I killed my team. I just lost my whole team. I'm so peeved right now. <laughs> he says peeved. That's what he says. That's and a direct then, quote. And then he's, meet it, he's negotiating with other people and he's like, Tuh. <laughs> What's going on? I'm smug, and that's my character. And it's just, and they're like, D they're like, damn it, Ethan Hunt, you don't know what you're talking about. He's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, why is he doing that? He should be more paranoid. Even if he hadn't lost his team, he should be more paranoid that the government's been chasing. The entire government is after him, and he's not like, whoa. He's like, I, I do get the idea that he's able to keep his cool if he's like a secret agent this whole time and he knows how to work well under those pressure situations. I, yeah. Well, I don't know if he's seen 24. He's seen 24? I've not seen 24. Well, Jack Bauer, the main character, he keeps his cool, but he's very serious. Like, because it's a very serious situation. You, If anybody, even if they could get their cool, they'd still be like, wow, I'm, I've lost all my friends and I'm being hunted down by the, by the FBI. I wouldn't be, he wouldn't be, there's a line between freaking out and being like, hey, everybody, I'm in this weird hotel room. <laughs> yeah. What was um, the hotel room? I know you have thoughts about the hotel room. I have thoughts about the hotel room because it's like they, what was it, the IMF. They rented out this hotel room or like they is must it, have is gotten it, a hotel it through room? them. Is it an apartment? It's I don't something know it where they must have gotten it through, the, the agents must have gotten it through them and then the IMF is trying to track down Ethan Hunt this whole time but he's still just chilling in the same safe house for days. Yeah, and they keep coming back to like the... Like the, I guess the bad guy government agents trying to hunt him down. They're like, we'll never find Ethan Hunt. He's meant to be a ghost. He's, he's yeah. we'll never find him. He's always on the move. And he's not always on the move. He keeps coming back and smirking in the same weird, weird <laughs> green painted room. I'm going to go smirk in the corner now. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so what did you think of the twist? Like, the twist villain at the end? Oh, where it was the old guy. Where I mean, I Jim, saw it coming almost immediately. Yes. As soon as the hand, the hand like, holding the gun was, like, twisted so, this way, I was like, that's his own for, hand. For probably. context, yeah, he has a camera on his... Jim, this old guy who's, like, the team leader, has a camera on his chest... And he's like, or is it in his glasses? I don't know. It's on. It's it's unclear. And he he's like, he he's like Ethan, no. And Ethan <laughs> looks at the camera, <laughs> it's, and it's it's a gun pointed at him, and it goes bang. And then he looks down, and he's like, Ew. no. And then he falls off the bridge. He says Ethan about four more times in the same voice. I almost think that it's ADR the same line, yeah. copy paste, <laughs> and they're saying Ethan over and over. Again. And you know, no body, no death. So. We we were like, okay, he's not dead. Yeah, I mean, no, there's for sure. no way. One hundred percent, he's not dead. Um, and he wasn't, so you know, pat on the back for us. Yeah, um, but I I don't know. I just it, it I saw it coming, and then I I like that the they. Ethan saw it coming before the big reveal, too, though. So it could have been worse. It wasn't like there was this big, like, liar-revealed scene. And he's like, whoa, he put it together. Well, in a way, it makes you feel like you're funny. So maybe that's something we're going for. <laughs> Um, what 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 else is there? To talk what about? do you think? What I'm mean, curious. What do you think about what they what in 1990s they thought about technology? I I like that he types it in and he goes to max.com. He's like, I gotta find this guy named Max. Max.com. But I mean, it was great. And the email going like, <laughs> with that considered, with those cool digital 1996 effects considered, what would you rate Mission Impossible out of ten? Uh, four. You just wail. Yeah. I would probably give it a five. Uh, there were some scenes, like right down the middle, there were some scenes that I th thought were really cool. There's some parts that I liked, but overall it just was not very cohesive, I thought. I love Tom Cruise. <laughs> and uh, now it's, uh, it's going back to the studio. Thanks for that, guys. We'll be right back for more after this break. That's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. Check out this week's screening, hosted by University Union, Top Gun Maverick. We'll see you next week.